Yesterday, I think, may have just been one of the craziest days I've ever had in the LEGO world, and maybe even like top 10 craziest days of my life. You guys saw from the title of this video, I went to the piece by piece movie premiere. What was just a regular day for me here in Toronto ended completely irregularly because I have some really great friends. Basically what happened was yesterday, I got a call from Sarah, just too good. She was like, Duck and I are hanging out come to our hotel. I knew that her and Duck were here in Toronto because I had been texting them both. They told me they were coming to Toronto. We knew we were gonna do some kind of meetup. We just didn't have a concrete plan because everybody's schedules are very, very chaotic. I headed to the hotel there. We hung out for a little bit and then Sarah, she actually had to go for another movie screening. So Duck and I were like, cool, let's go grab some food and hang out at mine. We ended up not going for food like we were planning to. We just came right to my house. We came and we like toured the Lego room for a little bit, which was really cool. Gave them the full tour of all the Lego. Duck actually had to take a work call so he went off to do that I was just doing my thing his work call went a little bit longer than expected and I, I ordered us some food and had to even deliver it to him for the meeting and then after his work call is where the day got absolutely nuts so he came out of his work call and he's like bro I just got a text that if I get there in 35 minutes I can walk the tiff red carpet I was like bro the hell yeah that's a, that's incredible let's do it we are about like 15, 20 minutes away from the venue. So I was like, yeah, we should probably get ready. He had to go back to his hotel and change. He was like, yeah, bet. Let's make a video in your Lego room first. And I was like, oh, what? You want to make a video before we, we have 12 minutes. He goes, exactly. We have 12 minutes. And I'm telling you right here, this is why Chris is a productive human being. In that 12 minutes, we ran to my Lego room. He goes, okay, cool. This is how we're going to do it. I'm going to walk backwards, do the intro. You hold the camera, then I'll grab the camera for you. And we'll do a full tour of your Lego room. And we're going to speed run it. One take. I was like, pet, we did it. Hey there, thanks for tuning into Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, and I'm not in my Lego collection because I've invaded someone else's. See, I'm in Toronto right now, and I'm visiting my friend Brick Lover Brad, who you can check out on YouTube, and we're gonna get an exclusive tour of his Lego room. Now, obviously, I'm not used to walking backwards in this room, so I've already bumped into something, but if you look around, this is is one of the coolest Lego rooms I've ever been in. We filmed the entire thing. By the time I was done in here, shutting off all the lights, I went out into my kitchen and Duck is already there with his laptop out. He's already exporting the video and uploading it to YouTube, which was insane. Duck is cooking. Let me cook, let me cook. He's cooking. We have to be at the red carpet for piece by piece in- 15 minutes. <laughs> it be so funny if I get this video out before we, before the premiere. I think I can do it. I think we can do it. Let me cook. We get in the car, I hot spot him so we can continue uploading it, we get to the hotel, he runs upstairs and changes really quick, leaves the video to upload, runs back downstairs, and we get in the Uber and we head off to TIFF. So we arrive to TIFF, the Uber parked us like a, like a minute away because it was so congested. We get to the red carpet, we get to meet up with Brick and Nick, which is really cool, and Duck and Brick and Nick walk the red carpet. It was super cool to see. I have spent so much time on the other side of the red carpet this TIFF season, checking it all the celebrities so it was so cool to see like friends of mine and people I know from Lego also get to walk the red carpet and to be invited there was like really cool to witness so I filmed a ton of clips for them then we were on the other side of the red carpet hanging out with the big Pharrell Lego minifigure which is really cool doing a little photo op getting some selfies which was fun and then we got to see Pharrell arrive which was really cool his little entourage it was so Toronto of us to like not even block the street for him to arrive we had to wait for the streetcar to pass but Pharrell got there it was super cool he did some meet and greets with the fans, took some photos, and then he, of course, walked the red carpet as well. And then it was almost time for the screening to start. Because I was Sarah's plus one for the event, I was went and found her so she because she had my ticket, and then everybody else went inside. Are you excited? Yes. Oh my god. So Sarah and I then actually got the opportunity to walk the red carpet. Yeah. <laughs> Big surprise. Yeah. She, as I said, was an invited influencer to this event, and they told me, hey, you're an influencer too, even though I wasn't invited to go. They're like, go ahead and walk it, which was a ton of fun. So got a little clip of me doing that, which was really, really cool, and then we went inside. We met up with Duck again, who was actually able to sit with us, even though we were seated in separate sections. And then, of course, we got ready for the movie premiere to begin. Pharrell and the director of the movie actually came out and did a little bit of an intro to the movie, what we could expect, which was really cool to see them. And then, of course, the movie actually started, and I can't wait to give you guys more of my thoughts and opinions towards the end of this video about what I thought of it, but it was really, really neat to see it. At the end of the movie, they actually came back out for a little audience Q&A.
uh, it actually got off to a little bit of a rocky start because a protester actually stormed the stage. You're right. You are. You right. You right. God bless you. God bless you. Everybody say it. God bless you. Okay. But Pharrell honestly handled it so perfectly. And sometimes when you have plans to change things, change things in, in, in situations, you have to get in a position of power and of influence. That is not necessarily the way to do it. And sitting in my position, when I have conversations on behalf of organizations like that, unbeknownst to them, they come out here and do themselves a disservice. But that's okay. When that change comes, everybody in this room will remember that I told you we're actually working on that. And if she would have just asked me, I would have told her. As you guys saw from the clips there, I don't think that I would have been able to handle it nearly as well as him and I just think it goes to show that he really is a good person. I thought he was genuine with everything he said. I don't think it was like a PR stunt to make him look good. Like it felt so genuine and it was really, really inspiring. After that little interruption, they actually continued on with the Q&A, which was really, really cool. I learned a lot about what it takes to make a Lego movie, some of the rules they had, some of the inspirations they got from the movie, and here are some of my favorite moments from the interview and the audience Q&A. Those toys gave me the room to, in those sets, uh, to, to imagine and daydream. And our oldest rocket, when he was little, we would get him Lego sets from around the world. And then when we had triplets, uh, yeah, we, had triplets. <laughs> we, we, we would get them Lego sets as well. Your story through the guise of Lego, it makes it more universal. And people realize that you'll see that it's not just the story of a black man from a marginalized community. It's all of you that have gone through different types of struggle uh, in your life. That Lego has a Bible of rules about what happens in Lego animation. And anything in this movie has to be buildable. You know, Pharrell, from the very beginning, and we both talked about this, about really pushing Lego to change their skin tone. The other thing is too, we sat down, you and I, with the team uh, to talk to them about meeting the, the hands of the consumer in the intersection of where they are. Because so many different hands put Lego uh, pieces together every day, millions and millions, and they don't all look the same. And because of our conversations there, uh, and we interceded on the behalf of humanity. We just said, we need to have all the colors. Um, and you don't always have to agree. This is not a, just so you guys understand, it's not a political thing for us. It's a human thing. It's a humanitarian thing. I put a lot of the full clips of them on Instagram, but I think everything he said had so much meaning and messaging to it. Like not only was he talking about the, the, the cool, the, the legal aspects or just the, the general aspects of making a Lego movie, but he also went way deeper talking about skin tones and inclusivity and representation in the Lego world. And he did it in such a way that it was like really left me thinking and I thought it was really special because he didn't make it political. He didn't make it like Legos doing being bad, Legos being good. He was like, I just want everyone to feel welcome. And I'm like, that's that's incredible. And he just, it was so powerful and so moving. And I think like it really just embodied who he is as a person and what the doc actually says about him and says about his life. So really, really excited. And that was like a very special, you know, moment for me. And then the whole screen actually ended with the band coming in and playing piece by piece and piece by piece is his new song that he's made for the film. And it is super catchy. It is going to be up there with like, everything is awesome. I was singing it in my head all day today. It was pretty wild. <laughs> And then 
the screening was done and the band had departed, I actually got the opportunity to attend the reception with Duck and Just Too Good, which was really, really cool. So huge thank you to both of them for the opportunity to tag along because I definitely shouldn't have been there, but I really appreciate it. They they got me in the door and it was just a really great night of networking, some food and some drinks. But overall, it was an absolutely insane day at TIFF. That was my first time ever attending a movie premiere, getting to walk the carpet, getting to just experience that and getting to see like my friends have such cool opportunities and like being able to tag along with them was just like absolutely amazing. So when I actually found out Chris and Sarah were coming to Toronto, I got super excited and I was messaging them both because I was like, if I can grab a meal with them and like let them tour my Lego room, that would be absolutely incredible. So I messaged them originally just solely for that purpose, but like the scope of the day really transpired the day of. I had a friend who works at TIFF and she had reached out to me about giving me a piece by piece ticket. She asked me what day I'd prefer to go and I just said Friday because it was the most convenient for my schedule, not realizing that Tuesday was actually the premiere of the movie. So then when I found out Chris and Sarah were coming for the movie, I was like, oh crap, maybe I'll try and like switch my ticket for Tuesday. A plan was just to go to the red carpet at this point and watch and then meet up with them after or something like that. And that's when Sarah was like, oh, I actually get a plus one for this event if you want to be my plus one. So I gladly accepted that. So huge thank you to her for giving me the opportunity to come along with her. She could have chosen literally anyone or just gone herself. So it was really special that she you know, included me in this moment of hers, which I really do appreciate. So thank you, thank you to her for that. Uh, it was really, really awesome and like made this day so special. The day ended up being so crazy. Unfortunately, Sarah never actually made it uh, to the Lego room. So she'll have to come and check it out next time she is in Toronto. But it was like, she saw a lot of movies uh, for the screening. So if you guys wanna hear her reviews, check them out on her letterbox. They are really fun to read. And as somebody who's not a huge film buff, like. It was so cool to read her review and her perspective on the films because it gave me a different perspective of how to like analyze a film instead of just watching it and be like, yeah, that was good or yeah, that was bad. Um, so that was really, really cool and like a ton of fun. And now I'm sure you guys probably wanna know what I thought about the film itself. And I'm very excited to kind of share my thoughts about it. I think the biggest word that I could use to describe my thoughts on the film would be surprised. And surprised in a completely good way. So I originally went into the film with a pretty open mind. You know, I think when they initially announced Piece by Piece, I was like more confused about the film. I was like, I know who Pharrell Williams is. I don't know a lot about Pharrell Williams, but like I've never seen him do Lego before. Like it's not like he's Miles Turner where he's an NBA player, but like likes Lego. He's not Pharrell Williams, a music producer, but also like the Lego guy. So I was like, hmm, this is really interesting why they decided to choose Lego to tell this story instead of just making a documentary about his life like every other celebrity does. So I think my biggest thing was just like, why did they choose Lego to make this? And yeah, as I said, I went in with an open mind, like not really having expectations whether it would be good or bad and I was just excited to see what it was like and it really honestly surpassed my expectations like I'm very easy to please it doesn't take a lot to, to satisfy me but this was this was really really well done without actually giving you guys spoilers of the film itself I think when you watch it I think you'll just really understand why they chose Lego as the medium to tell the story instead of like filming a documentary and using archive footage or like footage and stuff like that like it felt like they were really telling his story and then they were using Lego bricks to do it. And because it's a real life story, it's not scripted in the sense that like they're shooting scenes and stuff like that. It actually more felt that I was living for our story than watching it back. If you're watching any other documentary, it's the, the artist or the, the famous person. It is, they're sitting in front of the camera. They're telling the story. They've got archive footage overlay. They're not really like recreating scenes, but with this one, they were recreating the scenes and they could do that because it was Lego bricks and not real actors. Like they, nobody was acting. They were just like recreating the stories out of Lego, which as I said, I really like because I thought I was actually living the film instead of just watching it back. And when you guys watch the film, you're really gonna see how they were able to use Lego bricks to represent a lot of moments in the movie. Specifically, there is many times where they used Lego pieces to represent non-tangible moments, which I thought was amazing. Like, again, I don't wanna spoil the film for you because that was such a special part to see, but like the fact that they were able to explain concepts and untangible moments, untangible things, but made them tangible through Lego bricks, through storytelling was 
really, it was really, really cool. It was just such a great way to visualize concepts and if this had been like a real life movie with like real humans, they would not have been able to do that the same way they did. So like that was really, really special. I went into the film also like not knowing a lot about Burrell. Like I know who he is and I know his music, but like I don't know his backstory. And I went to the film because I'm a Lego fan and they used like Lego to tell the medium. I wouldn't have gone to the film most likely had I not been a Lego fan. So I got to learn a lot about Pharrell, which is really awesome. I got to experience a lot of his music and it was like the whole film was full of music. The whole time I just felt myself in my seat, like doing a little dance, stuff like that, because it was like such good music. It was really lively, really entertaining. And it was like a lot of fun. And it was funny, like talking to people in the reception afterwards, like some people went because they liked Pharrell. Some people went because they like Lego. And it was just like super cool. One lady I was talking to, she was like, I wasn't even going to come because I don't like Lego, but I think it's really cool now. And then other people were like, yeah, like I'm only here because I like Lego, but it was great to learn more about Pharrell. So it was like the contrast was really, really neat. Something else that I found really interesting about the film was the fact that they were able to include a lot more risky moments in the film film than we've ever seen Lego or any of the other Lego movies do. Not only did they actually have a few swear words here and there that were very minor ones like shit that didn't actually take away from the film itself but like just were used in more like comical moments and stuff like that but again something Lego would normally never do but it just added to the film and it didn't like take away because I find sometimes like excessive swearing or like vulgar language can do that and that wasn't the case here so they got to do a little bit more risky with that there was other instances where there was like mini figures that were barely dressed like they were very scandalous looking minifigures in their outfits and stuff like that. There was a time where there was marijuana smoke and it was all like done in a really funny way that again like didn't take away from the film but like added to it and just like gave it that like risky PG-13 moments in it. And like on the flip side of more risky moments that weren't as funny and were a little bit more serious like they had church scenes which weren't like no, they weren't like super serious, but they were like lively and it was showing their music and religion wasn't a big aspect of the film, but like Pharrell did talk about how religion has played a little bit of his life, which again was cool to see because Lego doesn't normally touch religion, but then it did get into more deeper and serious subjects like racism and inequality and there were scenes of like the Black Lives Matter protest, which obviously is something that shook the, the, the world to its core um, and it was a huge huge thing a few years ago when Pharrell was like making his music and Lego doesn't really get involved in politics all that often so the fact that they let the protests be spoken about in the film and like recreated out of Lego bricks and like there was minifigures chanting I can't breathe there was police there they clashed like it was really powerful I think to see those again recreated in Lego bricks and I was happy that they got to be included in the story um, and I think like when you guys watch it as well like you'll you'll understand a little bit more how it all ties in like it wasn't a political movie it, it was an impactful movie and again I think like from what I said earlier about Pharrell talking with the protester I think the movie really like embodied who he was as a person and like really what he stands for so like I'm like I know he was proud of the film and how it represented him and I'm really glad they chose Lego as the, the, the medium to tell a lot of this story because I don't think it could have been recreated with archive footage or had and if it was recreated with archive footage I don't think it would have been nearly as impactful and finally just in terms of like the actual animation of the film itself I did enjoy it um, but there was just something about it that I couldn't put my finger on it and I think after the film just like talking with Duck and Just Too Good and Nick and Simon as well as Lego Me the OG who is like an experienced Lego animator they were able to put their finger on it a little bit more it felt more polished and clean like the Lego Dreams animation than like the Lego Movie animation. It wasn't a bad animation whatsoever, it was just like so polished it was almost unrealistic. Like Lego Me the OG as I mentioned who is an incredibly talented T-Fall and Lego animator, he was like yeah it just was unrealistic because the Lego bricks were in pristine condition, like they there was no dust, there was no fingerprints, there was no chips or discoloration. It was like all brand new pieces, which you don't get. And I was like, that makes so much sense. Like Lego movie, some of the pieces were more worn, like they just weren't so pristine. But in this movie, they were pristine. And at like points, I would almost forget that I was watching a Lego movie and they thought it was an animated movie. And then there would be times I'd see things like that. I'm like, oh, that's a Lego or like, oh, that's a cool piece or like a building technique. Like, you know, the Lego fan in me was thinking of that. Um, there was a lot of like, again, you saw the clips earlier where they talked about like in the film, they only show elements that could be made of Lego, even if they're, they don't exist. And I like, for the most part, it was a lot of similar pieces. Um, some were like brand new pieces. And I was like, guys, we want those pieces. Like, especially some of the hair pieces were like ones that we've never seen before. And I think Lego could go a long way to include them. Like they, 
Pharrell's right. They only include like pretty standard, traditionally like white people head and hair and stuff like that. Like they don't have a lot of textures. They've never done like braids for males or anything like that. So seeing the braids in the movie, I thought was really cool. And I was like, that is like, there's so many kids and there's so many millions of people around the world who wear their hair like that. But like Lego doesn't offer that as a hair piece. So I hope that they, they can include that in a city set without being controversial. Like they could definitely do a little bit more. And I think by the sounds of it, Lego is planning to do that. So it was really cool to know that like the pieces included there could have been made of Lego but like there was also times where I was like like I was looking at the recording boards for example and I was like mm, I don't know how easy that would be to recreate but also as like a builder and like an amateur mockus like I was like oh that's a cool building technique I'd like to recreate that or something like that especially I just built a nightclub in my Lego city which you guys will see in a few weeks so it was like oh I could maybe use some of this for like the DJ booth but overall it was a really good movie and I think every time we see a movie like that like I would love to see more hair pieces. Like, I'd love to see some of those pieces recreated. I don't think, it's not gonna be like the Lego movie where we're gonna get a whole wave of sets, you know, collectible minifigure lines and stuff like that. Like, all the minifigures here would be, be like really famous people um, that you all know, and I didn't even know Pharrell had played a part in their career. So I don't think we're gonna get like a collectible movies line of these Lego minifigures, but it would be cool if we got some of the accessories integrated in other Lego sets. It doesn't have to be in CMFs, it doesn't have to be in piece by piece official sets. Like, it could just be those pieces in those other sets. So I think overall, as you guys could hear from this review, I think it was a really, really good movie and I'm really excited that I had the chance to go. And I think you guys should definitely check it out when it comes to theaters on October 11th, one month from filming this video. I think you guys should definitely check it out. Like if you're expecting uh, another Lego movie repeat, you're not gonna get it. But if you wanna see a really good story told through Lego bricks, you are 100% gonna get that. So definitely make sure you check it out. So once again, I just wanna give a huge thank you to Chris, Sarah, Nick, Simon, and everybody who helped make this experience amazing. It was such a fun day. This is gonna like going to be one of the days that is going to live in my memory forever. Um, just how wild and crazy it was. You never know what's gonna happen. It was an absolute blast. So again, huge thank you to all of them for inviting me along for this incredible opportunity and giving me the chance to join you guys. I really, really appreciate it. So everybody, thank you so much for watching today's video. Make sure you guys check out all of their channels and see all their social media coverage of this event as well because it was just incredible. So thanks again so much for watching and I will see you all here in the next video.